Hello everyone and welcome to this video. My name is Kleena and today I'm going to take you through the solution to question 8 from this Leaving Cert higher level paper. And this question is based on probability and data. So let's get right into it. We're told that Jenna is researching fuel consumption in cars and that she finds the following data for the number of miles per gallon for 8 different cars and they're labelled A to H when driving in the city and on the motorway. So you can see here you have the table. A to H are 8 different cars. And then you have their miles per gallon fuel consumption in both the city and the motorway. So question A part 1 tells us that the scatter plot below shows this data for cars A to F and it's asking us, using the data in the table, plot and label points to represent cars G and H on the scatter plot below. So let's look at G first. G's fuel consumption is the city in the city is 30 and on the motorway is 40. So let's plot this. So on the city, it's 30. So we're going to start here. And on the motorway, it's 40. So we go straight up vertically along this line until we get to 40 on the motorway. And that is point G. And then for point H, let's have a look on the table. So for the city, it's 17. And for the motorway, it's 30. So let's plot this. So I'm going to plot this in pink. So this here must be 15. And that's 20. So 17 is probably going to be around there. So 17 here. And I think it was 30 on the motorway. So 17 in the city. And go vertically up from here. Up to 30 on the motorway. And plot your point. And that there is H. So now that we've done part one, we're going to move on to part two, where we're asked to draw the line of best fit for the data on the scatter plot by eye. So let's go up to the scatter plot now and see how we can draw the line of best fit. So for the leaving cert, when you're asked to draw the line of best fit by eye, you're going to want to draw a line that goes through the points so that it's equidistant between the points. So I'm going to get my ruler up here and we're going to try to place it so that the points are the same distance above it as they are below it. So this line here looks about right. So you can see that there's points above it and there's points below it and they're about the same distance above and below it. If we take our line here now and just draw it through like so. And I'm going to remove my ruler. And this here is our line of best fit. Now for the marking scheme, they weren't too specific. They just said to draw an appropriate line of best fit through the data. So for drawing the line of best fit and for plotting the points G and H in part one, you're going to get a total of 10 marks for this question. Now we're told two other cars, K and L, have the miles per gallon values given in the following table. We're asked to use our line of best fit on the scatter plot to estimate for each of the two missing values in the table below and to show your work in the scatter plot. So K in the city, the consumption is 20 miles per gallon. So let's find that. So here, it's 20 miles per gallon in the city, right? So what you're going to want to do is start at 20 and go all the way up following this line. And we don't need a ruler because we can just follow this line going up until it reaches the line of best fit. And now we're going to use our ruler at that point to go straight across and it arrives there just underneath 30. So I would probably say 29 miles per gallon on the motorway. So I'm gonna scroll down here, get rid of my ruler. So when the fuel consumption in the city is 20, fuel consumption on the motorway is 29 miles per gallon. So now we're going to do this backwards for the car L because we're told that on the motorway the fuel consumption is 60 miles per gallon. So let's go up to our graph. So it starts at 60 miles per gallon on the motorway and we're asked to find the city fuel consumption. Now the first thing I noticed that is going to become an issue here is that our line of best fit doesn't even reach up as far as 60. So I'm going to extend that so that it reaches 60. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to get my ruler and go all the way across here using my purple pen until it hits the line of best fit. And then when it hits the line of best fit, I'm going to turn my ruler vertically and go straight down to the X axis. So I'm going to draw a line straight down. I'm going to get rid of my ruler. So it arrives here at between 45 and 50. So I'm going to say it arrives at 47 miles per gallon. So city consumption is 47. So that's it for question part three. Now let's move on to question part four, which is very much based on part three. It asks us, based on the data given, would you be more confident in the value you estimated for K or for L? And to give a reason for answer. 
So for me, definitely, I found that I would be more confident in my answer for K, which is the first one that we did. And why is that? That is because L was well beyond any of the other given data points. So we can't kind of be confident that it's even similar to the other points. So that's why I'm more confident trusting my answer for question K. Now, the last part of question A requires good calculator skills. It asks us to find the value of R, the correlation coefficient between city and motorway miles per gallon, and we're asked to use only the values for the eight cars A to H in the table on the previous page and to give our answer to three decimal places. So I'm going to go up to the table and go through how to do this. And just for your information, I'm going to use my own Casio calculator up here. So if you have a sharp calculator, it will be different calculating the correlation coefficient. So if you have a sharp calculator, I would recommend going onto YouTube and searching how to find the correlation coefficient on a sharp calculator or whatever other calculator you're using. But if you have a Casio, then you can follow along as I go. So to find the correlation coefficient, the first thing we need to do is press mode. And then we're going to go to stat mode, so two. And then we're gonna press two again, okay? Cause that's the line mode, okay? A plus BX, so two. So now we're gonna fill in all the values in the X column for the city. So we have 22, then press equals. The next value is 27, press the equal sign. 24, press the equal sign and keep going until you have all eight of your values in. And then when you have all the values in the X column, you're gonna press the arrow here to the right and go all the way up to the top of the Y column and start filling those out. So the first value is 34, press equal, 38, equal, and so on, all the way down until you have all eight values in. Now, when you have all eight values in for the X column and the Y column, you're going to press AC. Now you're going to press shift and you're gonna press the number one, because as you can see there on yellow up the top there, it says stat, statistics. So now we're gonna press five, and then finally three to find R. And then press equals, and you'll get the value of 0 0.9659. But we're asked to find the correlation coefficient correct to three decimal places, so it's 0.966. So that's our answer for this question, and for that question, you're going to get five marks. So now in question B, we're told that the scatter plot on the right shows some values of fuel consumption for the given values of engine speed, which is S, for a particular car, okay, so fuel consumption here is F, engine speed is S. For the points in this scatter plot, F can be closely approximated by a quadratic function of S. So R of F S is the correlation coefficient between F and S based on the points in the scatter plot. Give a reason why you think that R F of S is very close to zero. Correlation is actually related to linear relationships. And we were dealing with a linear relationship in part A there. So if it's a very linear relationship, as if, as in, if the line of best fit looks like this, it's going to have a correlation coefficient of one, right? If the line of best fit is something like it's going to be in this question, correlation coefficient is going to look like this and it's going to be zero, okay? So it's going to be almost horizontal. So correlation is related to linear relationships and this relationship here is quadratic, okay? And we can see that it's a quadratic function. So the line of, of best fit for this question is nearly horizontal. So you can make those two points there and those are the reasons that the correlation coefficient of F and S is very close to zero. Now let's move on to question C. So in question C, we're told that 13 customers rated their experience in a garage by giving a whole number score out of 100. And the mean score was 52 and the median was 54. No two scores were the same. The table below shows the score for each of the 13 customers. Stephen gave a score of S and Mary gave a score of M. So here they are, we're not given what their scores are. We're asked to find the least value and the greatest value that S could be. So first of all, let's write out how to find the mean. So the mean is going to be the sum of all of these values plus S plus M. So I'm not gonna write them all out. So if you put those all into the calculator, which we're gonna do now, so we have 46 plus 68 plus 24 plus 74 plus 42 plus 30 plus 61 plus 54 plus 28 plus 50 plus 57 and that gives you 534. So the sum of all those is 534 plus S plus M divided by the total number of values, which is 13, is equal to the mean, and that's 52. 
So now we have 534 plus S plus M is equal to 52 multiplied by 13. So let's work that out. 52 by 13 is 676. I'm going to bring this over here, take it away. So 534 and that's equal to S plus M. So S plus M is equal to 676 minus 534, which is 142. So this is good to know. Now let's see how we can use the median to help us find an answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these values in order. So the values that we know, I'm going to put them in order. So we're left with 24, 28, 30, 42, 46, 50, 54, 57, 61, 68, 74. Now our median value is 54. So this is our median value. Now there's 13 values all together when you add in the S and the M. So that means that the median is going to be the seventh value. There's going to be six before it and six after it. You can see here there's already six before 54. So S and M are both after 54. So the least value that S can be is 55 because you'll remember that at the start of the question we're told that no two values are the same. So S and M both have to be larger than 54 but they can't be 54. So the least value is 55. Now how can you find the greatest value? So we'll remember that S plus M have to equal 142. If M is the least value it can possibly be, and the least value that M can possibly be is also going to be 55. So S plus 55 is 142. This is going to find us the greatest value of S because we've given the least value of M. So S is equal to 142 minus 55. So S is equal to, and we'll use our calculator, 87. So the least value is 55 and the greatest value is 87. And for this question, you're going to get a total of 10 marks. Now the last question, question D, is based on expected value. We're told that John bought a car a number of years ago and that the table gives an estimate of the probability that each of the following three events happen to John's car in the next year. So the probability of the head gasket blowing is 0.095. The probability of the timing belt going is 0.041. And the probability that the air filters break is 0.073. So question D part 1 tells us that if the head gasket blows, John will have to replace his car and that will cost him 20 grand. If the head gasket is replaced now, it'll cost 1,450 and the probability that it blows in the next year will be reduced to 0.0. 0.5. And we're asked, based on these figures, based on these figures, use expected values to work out if it's replacing, if it's worth replacing the head gasket now or not. So what is the probability that John has to spend 20 grand on a new car? So the expected value is 20 grand, that's how much he'd have to spend. And what's the probability of that happening? 0 0.095. So let's work this out. 20,000 multiplied by 0 0.095. And that's 1,900. That's the expected value. Now let's find out the cost if he replaces it now plus the expected value of it happening again, basically. So 1,450 he's spending, but he also has to consider paying 20 grand to replace the car if it happens again. But the probability is reduced to 0 0.005 this time. So now let's work this out. 1,450 plus 20,000 multiplied by 0 0.005 and that is 1550 that's the expected value of this so based on the expected values here john is going to save 350 euro based on the expected values by replacing his head gasket now so we can conclude here he should replace the head gasket and for this question you're going to get a total of 10 marks so now let's move on to the final part of this question we're asked to work out the probability that at least one of the events in the table above happens to John's car this year. Taking these events to be independent, give your answer correct to three decimal places. So the probability of at least one is equal to one minus the probability that none of the events happen. And this is easier to work out. So it's going to be one minus, and let's go back to the table. 
So the probability that the head gasket doesn't blow is going to be 1 minus 0 0.095. The probability that the timing belt doesn't go is 1 minus 0 0.041. And the probability that the air filters don't break is 1 minus 0 0.073. So the probability that this happens and this happens and this happens is if you multiply them all together. So let's go back down to the question. So 1 minus the probability of none of them happening is going to be 1 minus the probability that the first thing won't happen multiplied by the probability that the second thing won't happen multiplied by the probability that the third thing won't happen. And I'm going to put this into my calculator. So I have 1 minus... 1 minus 0 0.095 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.041 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.073. And that gives us an answer of 0 0.954, but we're asked to give it correct to three decimal places, so our answer for this question is 0 0.195. So that's the probability that at least one of these events will happen. And for this question, you're going to get a total of 10 marks. So that's all for this question, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope that I've cleared up anything that you may have found difficult with this question. I'll see you all in the next video.